Hi everyone, I am Deborah Ross and I am chair of the Western New York Task Force for the total solar eclipse of 2024. And I am here with Dan Schneiderman, who is the Eclipse Partnerships Coordinator for the Rochester Museum and Science Center. And I'm also here with Steve Fentress, who is the Planetarium Director of the Strasenberg Planetarium of the RMSC also. So we are here in downtown Rochester at beautiful Frontier Field, uh, where the Red Wings usually play. Now it is typically this time of year packed with bands for the beginning of baseball season. But today, April 8th is an important day. And I'm gonna have Dan tell us why it is such an important day today. Well, April 8th is the day that all of us here in Rochester in 2024 will get to experience a total solar eclipse. Okay, so tell us what that means. A solar eclipse is when the moon passes in front of the sun and completely blocks it out, except for a slight ring around. And so why, why are we special here? In, why, why here as opposed to anywhere else? Well, being a few years away, we are hoping to find the best locations around Rochester to experience the eclipse. Right, now today, three years, we're three years out and we're looking around the ballpark, right? And so the question that every, should be on everybody's mind is where, where are we going to view the eclipse? So it's important to go out in the afternoon, this first week of April or so, about 3.20 in the afternoon, because you'll figure out where you're gonna be. So are you gonna be where the sun is? And that's really important for us to look. So if you go outside around three to 3.20 to four, look and see where the sun is and where there are shadows, right? So we're here in Frontier Field. We see that there are shadows over first baseline and all of the seats under, for, uh, you know, on the side of first base. So that's probably not exactly where you wanna be. So this is an excellent exercise for anybody who should ever, all of us should be planning for this exciting day here. So now what do we wanna know when we're looking for the sun and what we need to know about the science of well, all of this? First of all, please do not look directly at the sun. Right. We have eclipse viewers. Or solar filters solar as our CEO filters. likes to say, because you know what? We're looking at the sun right now. You can see all kinds of, you can see the sun. It's actually, you can use these solar filters anytime for your own solar exploration. Don't look at the sun with your eyes, but look at them through this. And actually to dive deeper, we're gonna turn it over to Steve, the director of the Strassenberg Planetarium here at the RMSC. Well, thank you. Uh, welcome to the operation, Dan. Nice to see you again, Deb. So if I can share my screen, well, let's look at the eclipse from outer space. So I am using a free app called NASA's Eyes from the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. And those people know more than anybody in the world about where the planets are gonna go. And we are looking from the point of view of the moon on April 8th, 2024, three years from today. And let me go forward in time. You see the earth up there. There's the big moon in the middle of your screen and look way, that's the earth out there, a quarter of a million miles away. And if I go through time here slowly, you can see we're following the moon in its orbit and it is casting its shadow on the earth. And there's the shadow passing over the earth, making the eclipse. Let's look at that a little closer. So we're gonna go right to it. And let's back time up a bit to earlier in the afternoon. There we go. Sometimes you wish you could turn time backward. So what's going to happen is that the shadow of the moon will come ashore over Mexico, a little over an hour before it gets to us, passes over Texas, goes kind of up the Ohio Valley and then reaches us at 3.20 in the afternoon. And just because it's fun, let's turn around and see where the sun is in our sky here. There we go. So here we are from a little bit off to the side of the earth. And if you look over to the left there, you can see the moon and the sun. And from our point of view out here in space, uh, it's a partial eclipse. So you really do need to be in the right place at the right time to see totality. And that's what we've got coming three years from today. Let me show you some pictures uh, illustrating the kind of thing to expect here. Hold on, I'm gonna quit that and I'm gonna share another screen. There we go. So eclipses, uh, whether they are solar or lunar are extremely impressive and it's absolutely absolutely free show in the sky. There are solar eclipses where the, uh, the sun's bright disk is blocked out by the moon and there are lunar eclipses where the full moon dips into the shadow of the earth.
Lunar eclipses, which we have some coming up uh, in the next few years, are completely safe to look at. You do not need glasses for lunar eclipses. But for solar eclipses, you need to have those glasses or use some method to project an image of the sun onto a light colored surface during the partial phases. And we found in the 2017 eclipse at RMSC, people loved the low tech methods just as much as the high tech methods. So wear special solar viewing glasses or project an image of the sun. There are three main kinds of solar eclipses. There's a partial eclipse where the moon covers only part of the sun's disk, even in the middle of the eclipse. Total eclipses, which is what we have coming up three years from right now. And a rare type called annular, from the Latin word annulus meaning ring, where a bright ring of the sun's disk is exposed during the eclipse. This is a solar eclipse map. And this, uh, you see here a globe of the earth and this is made for April 8th, 2024. And you may see a, an S shaped purple double line through the middle, that is the central path. And if you are in that path, the dark part of the moon's shadow will pass over you. Outside of that in the area with the blue and green lines, you see a partial eclipse. Um, solar eclipses are possible because the sun and the moon look almost exactly the same size in our sky. They are not the same size at all. The moon is about 400 times smaller than the sun, but the moon is also about 400 times closer to us in space, so it appears the same size. Here's a real photograph from an eclipse a few years ago taken by a meteorology satellite observing the Earth, and uh, a little bit to the top uh, and a little bit to the right, you can see the dark shadow of the moon passing over some clouds. So that's what it really looks like from space. Here's a map of where the shadow will go on April 8th, 2024. So this is a map of the continental United States plus some of Canada and Mexico. And you start at the lower left and you see this dark band. That's where totality will be. The shadow comes ashore at Mazatlan, Mexico, passes over Durango a little bit of San Antonio, a little bit of Austin, Waco, Dallas, Fort Worth, then across Arkansas, over Carbondale, Illinois for the second time in seven years, Indianapolis and Bloomington, then Cleveland, Ohio, then the shadow follows I-90 up to us and then continues uh, into uh, Northern New York, uh, Maine, New Brunswick and Newfoundland. Let's zoom in closer on our area. So here's a map that is centered on the Rochester Buffalo region. And you see going from lower left to upper right, a red line. That's the center line of the eclipse path. If you're on that line, you get the maximum number of seconds of totality. But if you are anywhere between the two blue lines, you will see at least some totality. If you are even a little bit outside the blue lines, you will not get a total eclipse. So for example, uh, Hamilton, Ontario, yes. Uh, Kitchener, no. Uh, Canandaigua, yes. Elmira, no. Syracuse, yes. Binghamton, no. And you can see Buffalo's right on the center line. Brockport's right on the center line. Rochester is very close to the center line for three years from today. What you see during the eclipse, there's the partial phase where the moon is covering up the sun. This is when you need to use your projection method or your glasses. The crescent of the sun gets smaller and smaller. There's a phase called Bailey's beads just before totality where a little bit of the sun is shining through valleys on the rough surface of the moon. Uh, sometimes it looks like a diamond ring. And in 2017, there were marriage proposals that happened right at that time. I heard one of them. Then totality comes, you see an outer layer of the sun called the chromosphere. And this photograph by Mr. Druckmuller, who's very famous for these, attempts to convey the impression of the sun's outer atmosphere, the corona during totality. It is really so unbelievably beautiful. No photograph really gets it. This is a photograph taken in Northern Ireland during a partial eclipse in March, 2015. Um, not too different from conditions in Western New York in April. So this is kind of what it might be like. Let's hope for nice weather. Here's a photograph taken somewhere in the United States during 2017, giving a pretty good impression of the beautiful deep twilight during totality, dark enough for bright stars and planets to be seen. It's uh, just beyond description. It is like being on another planet. You must make plans to be outside in the afternoon three years from today uh, to see this solar eclipse. Let me flash quickly through some other eclipses coming up. 
Uh, there's a partial solar eclipse coming up at sunrise on Thursday, June 10th. You want to be able to look to the northeast and see the sun rising and do it early because it's all over well before 7 a.m. There are lunar eclipses coming up. We've got one in the middle of the night uh, in November of 21. A beautiful lunar eclipse in May of 22. If the weather's nice, this will be a lovely evening. Another brutal middle of the night November lunar eclipse. Then mark this one, kind of interesting, October 14th, 2023, a partial solar eclipse. So the tizzy about glasses will be restarted for that. And then six lunar cycles later, the big one, April 8th, 2024. So those are some things to look forward to. And so Dan, tell us a little bit about what the RMSC specifically is doing to help prepare our region for the eclipse. So the RMSC, we're trying to become the eclipse central hub for the entire greater Rochester region. We're planning on events, education days, we're thinking maybe festivals, partnering up with everyone in the region from drinks and food to art, to everything you can possibly imagine. That's right. And we've already been holding stakeholder meetings. We actually started right after the 2017 eclipse because eclipses are predictable. So we knew that we were going to be directly in that path. So the whole Rochester area has been preparing for this in education, tourism, transportation, government, law enforcement. We're on board. We know it's happening. And so we also know that because as Steve showed us in the map, that the eclipse is not hitting the Atlantic coast of the US, except I think maybe tippy top of Maine. We are the closest city with a major science center in driving distance basically of Boston, New York, Philadelphia and DC. So we will be welcoming hundreds of thousands of visitors. If you're outside Rochester, come, we're gonna be prepared. And if you are inside Rochester, well, company's coming, we need to get ready. Head outside, take a look at the sun and tell us and send us some photos of uh, what the sun yes, looks like. Yes, you can inside. use Rock Eclipse. Uh, the hashtag is Rock Eclipse 2024. We would love to see your photos. We would love to hear where you're taking your photos from. We want to start making plans and we need your help to make that possible. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Dan. Thank, Thank you, Dan. you so much, Steve. And thanks everybody for watching. Get ready. It's going to be awesome.